All right, our webinar is now live. All right, good evening, everybody. For the special meeting of the Downtown Community Task Force of March 31st, 2021, uh, we'll complete roll call first. So, uh, Leslie, please call the roll. Thank you. Member Thompson. Here. Member Andrasek. Here. Member Mayer. Here. Member Von Hune. Here. Member Vargas Smith. Here. Member Coyne. Here. Member Ty. Here. Member Varjane. I saw her. Oh, she's on mute. Oh, oh waving her hand. Okay. Hey. Member Varjane is here. <laughs> and Member Reed is absent. He did let us know. He emailed, it. correct, Leslie? Correct. All right. Um, so we need to first, uh, any absences need to be excused. Excused absences should be approved only if the absence member previously notified the chair or staff in the advance of the meeting and has bona fide reasons if not to vote. If not, vote should be not to excuse the absence. So as I stated earlier, uh, Mr. Reed had actually notified us that he was unable to make it. So with that being said, is there a motion to excuse absent member Reed? Motion. Okay, so we'll have, I guess we'll have Dan and we'll have Butch a second, I'm assuming. Yep. They both jumped in there. Okay. So all in favor of excusing <coughs> member Reed this evening, please say aye. 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 All opposed to excusing member Reed this evening, please say no. All right, the ayes carry and member Reed is excused for this evening. Um, so let's see. So staff, can you read the meeting procedures into the record, please? Leslie, sorry. Yes, I hate saying staff. You. Just put your name. It's better. Sorry. It's like a teleprompter. <laughs> thank you, Chair Thompson. <laughs> Meetings are conducted by the chair in accordance with the following procedures. The chair of the DCTF directs all activity during the meeting. Any item on this agenda may be continued to a subsequent meeting. Special procedures, time limits may be applied to any items as prescribed by the chair. Copies of the current agenda and staff reports for each of the items on the agenda are available online on the Downtown Precise Plan website, as well as on the City Clerk's website. Chair? Thank you, Leslie, appreciate that. All right, moving to general business items. Can we just note that there's um, no items on our consent calendar this evening? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, anyone in the public that would like to address the task force? Well, there's no, there's nothing though, right? So item one, I guess, no. is what we go to. Yeah. No? Right? Go ahead. Yes, you can go to item one. Yeah. Presentation. So item one is what we'll go to first. So it's the discussion on the budget and scope of work of the downtown precise plan uh, continued from March 18th. So if everybody remembers correctly, uh, WRT was still putting together the proposal um, for the items that we had requested uh, itemized budgets for, and they had presented that to staff. And I, I believe staff sent them out a couple days ago. Um, see the item of this evening. So uh, Leslie, do you wanna, do you mind sharing? Yes. Yeah. I don't know if it, thank you, sorry. One second. I didn't download that. I, I looked on it on the. Sorry. There we go. Oop, it's kind of big. Can everyone see that okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, do you want me to go? One second. Ah, I went too far. <laughs> there we go. All right. Maybe I'll go to the the summary right here. Will that work? I think so. Unless there's, well, we can jump. I can. Up. Yeah, just let me know where if you want me to jump around. So we had, uh, I guess, yeah, should I just give a little preface? I already kind of gave a preface, but it looks like everything had been accounted for and they had provided us a proposal. So I guess I'll open it up to the task force for uh, 
any comments, questions? Um, Leslie, real quick, sorry, before we jump to that, I know member Reed had sent in some things. Yeah. Um, do we want to read those now, maybe? Yeah, while you guys think about it, I'll go ahead. Yeah, give everybody um, a minute. Yes, I forwarded his comments um, to the task force earlier today, and I will just read them into the record for everyone. Um, so unfortunately, Member Reed was not able to attend this meeting, um, but he wanted to relay his comments to the task force as well as the public. And that one comment that he has is as follows. I appreciate the work that WRT has put into their analysis and recommendations, and I agree with most of the descriptions and prioritization of the work they've provided. The only item I wanted to draw attention to was the downtown management entity, which I believe from experience will be pretty important. It's hard to get places um, to catch and stick. It requires flexibility, creativity, coordination, and support. Having a coordinated entity focused on such needs as early activation, marketing, recruiting, creating synergies, recommending policy or design adjustments could be the difference between a difficult transition period and a more successful build out. I don't, need, I don't know if it needs to go from medium to high priority, but in my mind, it's a necessary element of making new places work. So that is on the downtown management. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll open it up to the task force. You know, one thing I never did was add them all up. I don't know if anybody else did. Yeah, uh, it's 500,000 roughly. Ah, perfect, thank you. I Sorry, think I'm like, I looked at them list. all, but. Yeah. I think they have an Excel sheet, which is pretty robust. It's a hair above 500. Okay. So. That's what I was going to talk about. You want, you want <laughs> um, me to oh, go ahead, Atisha? Atisha uh, I just was wondering how, like, what? I'm just, I, I'm sorry, I missed the last meeting, and it was just some plans that were in place three months in advance, way before I even got onto DCTF. I couldn't change, uh, but I just wanted to understand, like, are we? What are, what's the main thing we are saying, let's put this in the bucket and put this out of the bucket. And are we gonna do through a voting exercise for each item? Like just trying to give well, some structure yeah, to so this conversation. I think, I think <clears throat> what we need now is we have, we have this information. These are the items we felt were potentially important to the success of the plan. Mm -hmm. So we had asked them for proposals for each individual item because um, we know there's obviously budget constraints within the city and we wanna be respectful of that. Um, but at the same time, we also want to make sure that this effort is not, you know, doesn't fall flat and is actually successful. Mm -hmm. It's It really comes down to, I think, uh, myself as the chair and, and Dan as the co-chair are going to go to council on the 6th, I believe, Leslie, is that correct? That is correct. To ask for more money. Got it. So Got depending it. on what this DCTF decides is how much more money we're going to ask for, and we're, you know, obviously going to need to be able to justify and stand there and say that it is important for X, Y, uh, X, Y, Z reasons. So, um, okay. So I, I would make a suggestion. We should go one item by one and maybe vote on each. I, that's just, I feel like there'll be a little bit more than just trying to discuss 500,000 together. Yeah, we, uh, we can, Oh, go ahead. Rob. I just think that we should talk a little bit about each one. If anybody has any comments relating them before we vote, right? We, we exactly. Have a little, yeah, yeah, a little bit of discussion. Not, you know, but yes. I mean, in the end, I think we 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 need to prioritize. They've prioritized from medium to high, but um, you know, I think we could look at it from a short term to long term. Is that you know, do we want to ask for half a million bucks? Do we think oh. that's you know, go ahead, Adam. Yeah. So maybe, maybe this is a, a good way to do it. So for comments, I think it would be really good to try to kind of like consolidate and try not to go back and around and around is if each member kind of waits until they have some thoughts and then they want to go through each item and each item, at least to get your initial thoughts out. And then we can open it up to kind of a wider discussion. If we, anybody wants to kind of have, a, um, you know, additional comments on any item and then we can go to let's go through that item by item and say what's important and what's not as a task force does that sound fair mm -hmm. yeah. okay so I'll, I'll let 
um, who wants to raise their hand first on the I'm trying to be a little bit more formal. No, Leslie, put your hand down. <laughs> <laughs> I have my hand up. All right, go ahead, Rob. Go for it. Okay. So um, I read through the um, Claremont uh, form base code, signage, all that um, kind of thing, uh, most of it. Um, and it's, it's a lot more extensive and uh, um, than I had originally thought, but it's there's a lot of value in there. I've got some issues, strong issues about uh, architecture review and how that happens and some other things, but I don't wanna get down the rabbit hole with that. So I, I do like a lot that's in there in terms of the form. Um, sign ordinance looked really good because the signage that I saw as examples in there were nice proportions, how they showed it. So I, those first two items, I. I am, I'm pretty much on board with um, whether there's a, another level below this extensive form based code. I mean, it's, it's a lot to process. It's a lot to work through um, as an architect even. Um, as for the area development, I'll just go down the list real quick. Development fee, I mean, look, it makes a lot of sense if how are we gonna pay for the infrastructure, right? And, and how do you have an impact fee that's gonna help us pay with the developers? Now, whether, we need to hire someone to do that for 100k or the city can come up with something for a lesser price or somehow with some some uh direction i'm not sure and maybe atisha could have a you know she's been through more of this stuff than i think anybody else here so um, i'm excited to hear what she has to say uh lafayette street design my feeling on that is um i, I mean i think it's important I, I do look at 70k and think is that something that's super important as opposed to other things. If I had to pick and choose, uh, I think it's important to get across there, but is that a $70,000 thing or is there another way? Um, but, uh, cause I'm, you know, I'm looking at 500 K and I'm, <laughs> uh, so wayfinding all this stuff, I, I think makes a lot of sense, but in terms of priority, um, and whether it's something we ask for, um, I mean, I look at early activation and I'm like, well, is, is that something that the city can do and this committee can do as a, as a kind of a more of a grassroots effort? Uh, or is it something that we need that, that professional advice on? And again, that's more of an Atisha question probably. <laughs> um, and uh, management entity, it's not a whole lot of money. I'm just curious about how other cities have done it and whether or not you need uh, you know, WRT to manage that or can you, you know, work with the chamber and get, get that going on another level and use examples as our guide. Uh, design review, sure. I mean, an additional DCF, you know, I don't have any issues with that. So that's kind of my quick and dirty top 10, you know. Deborah has her and, hand up. And Adam, I think you're on, I'm you on mute. I'm on mute. Yeah, Adam on mute. was on mute. Thank you. So, all right, real quick, I was going to say before I go to the next, I was going to ask if staff has any experience on what the better avenue would be if, like, let's say we, we even want to prioritize these into just two categories to council, right? Um, you know, should we go in? Is it better to go in with just everything and say we want it all or nothing? Or is it better to say, like, we really think we absolutely need this and there's no real you know uh, wiggle room on it and then these are the items that would be nice to have but you know we understand and we can always defer them to a later date yeah i mean you definitely should should go in and let them know what you as a task force think is critical to this process i mean this really is your your call as the the task force members um because obviously all of these things are in addition to what we're already doing they're not in our current scope right mm -hmm. um so this is a council decision on whether or not to spend money on these items. So if they're important to you, um, definitely put those up top. Um, and then, you know, 
Yeah, what I, what I don't want to do, I mean, just in my experience of like, if you go in with a laundry list and you say, well, these are my priorities one through 10. So it gets a little convoluted. Like what I want to do is probably break them up and, and again, task force, you know, and, you know, weigh in on this. But I, I think we should do a bucket of, we absolutely need this because mm -hmm. through the process, this is something that's really not, it would, it would be a, a huge detriment to the project and the process if we don't fund them. And then these are the, yes, they're nice to have, but, you know, and we think we absolutely should do them, but at the same time, you know, maybe they could be deferred to a later date. Yeah. Yes. I think yeah. keeping them to two or, you know, or just even mm -hmm. one is probably better, not giving them too many options because I've seen everybody gets kind of confused up on the dais sometimes, so. Uh, and Adam, I would also like to kind of throw in the discussion. Um, I would definitely defer to staff on some of these recommendations because they understand what's going to make implementation more streamlined. And I'm sure staff has gone through a lot of discussions with WRT, but like just also trying to like have staff reflect upon from their experience, what are the things that's going to help them implement this more easily without any other conflicts in future. So I think I would really like to have staff input on some of these items because they will be managing the scope as well. Thank you, Atisha. I, I was just going to add, um, I think the most important thing is for you to think about collectively, you know, what are the things that you absolutely need to accomplish before the downtown precise plan is adopted? And those things really need to get to the priority list. And those are the things that you would be saying to the council we need to do in order to really fulfill your goal for us to um, you know, finishing the precise plan, right? Yeah. And then there are a number of things here that are, this allows us to implement the plan as we've envisioned it. And that, I'm not saying those aren't important, but they fall into a different bucket of timing and different budgets and opportunities where you can make that ask at a different time. Um, so that's why I would just say, you know, given that resources are limited, that we focus on kind of the timing of when these things need to happen. Thanks, Rena. So Chair, do you want us to go around and just talk about the 10, you know, kind of just wide open as far as what we, what we think and some questions out of that or is that the process tonight? Yes. So okay. what we're going to determine is what we're asking for and how we're going to break it up. So I'll, I'll, sorry, I apologize for kind of interjecting there. I just wanted everybody to kind of have on what we're asking for. So let's take the next. Uh, so I think Deborah had her hand up first. So go ahead, Deborah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I agree. Like form based zoning code and probably a signed ordinance or anything that's going to have to work its way through. Um, you know, city attorney, et cetera, should probably be higher because they're going to take longer. Um, I was a little unclear on the difference between the sign ordinance and the wayfinding sign program, but that number five uh, sign program and branding, it, that seems a little high to me, um, which is my impression. I think we also need to understand the post COVID retail and office analysis. Um, because as we develop the form-based code, um, if we're going to try to focus on retail, we need to understand um, the forecast of retail's recovery. Uh, early activation, I do think that there are many city organizations that can, can fulfill that need, not just organizations like the Cultural Commission, um, but the, um, you know, the downtown, um, Reclaiming Our Downtown, um, Old Quad and other uh, other organizations. And I think that with the um, community engagement process and those meetings that are supposed to happen, that kind of uh, feedback and uh, those ideas can be collected in a much more organic way. I do think that the downtown management entity will be important. I agree with Matthew's logic on that one. Um, so the ones that I would call, you know, higher would be the form-based zoning code, 
uh, the sign ordinance and number six, the post COVID retail and office analysis. Deborah, just to clarify for you, the sign ordinance would be for business signs or building signs. Um, that's what that would regulate. And then the wayfinding sign program would be more like um, signs that say downtown this way or, you know, banners that get put up like on El Camino Real on the light posts. They have those banners that can go up where you can announce, you know, announce mm -hmm. stuff. That's more like the wayfinding. Or if you have like a kiosk that says, University this way, downtown this way. That's the, the sort of branding thing. That's how they're different. Okay, thanks. Sign ordinance for private place for private um, okay. Mm -hmm. entities. Okay. So then I agree that the wayfinding and branding is something that could be um, postponed or put into the um, do it later bucket. Yeah, thanks. Bro. Um, question based on Deborah's comments if is the signage would that um, would that that would obviously be specific for these 10 blocks and I know the city has their own limitation on signage so would that supersede for these 10 blocks Leslie yeah it would so you'd be okay. creating your own sign ordinance for downtown so it wouldn't be subject to the the citywide sign ordinance got it thank you just wanted to clarify mm -hmm. But Adam, there was some notations in one of these um, uh, uh, in the Claremont thing that some of the things that you incorporate into this um, form based code can be a model or adopted for other areas like let's say the El Camino Real and, and signage or whatnot. Meaning the research has been done and it, its potential is that it could be adopted in other areas of the city. Sure. Just, just sort of as a question. No, I fully agree. I just want to make sure we kind of have the chicken and the egg mm -hmm. first, which is if we yeah. do this, then this would be the first. And then if they decide to adopt it on a larger, a yeah. larger basis throughout the city. They... I, I, I feel like, you know, like branding should be specific to a district for what the idea we're trying to create and not be replicated in other places. Like every district should have its own branding and its own theme. Uh, I'm just kind of putting into like being replicated to citywide, just kind of adding to that. Like if we are trying to talk about downtown, then this has to be the special yeah. downtown. It was more about the signage. We're talking about Tisha. Oh, go ahead, Rob, if you want. It was just about signage in terms of those proportions on the storefront. Yeah, the branding, I didn't intend to yeah. say that that would transfer to other mm -hmm. areas. It's the signage and some of the form based elements could transfer to other parts of the city since we don't have it. Because the city right. has. Yeah, there, there's some pretty limiting signage rules within the city of Santa Clara, Tisha. So mm -hmm. it, it would just be to where they could take the model and then maybe retrofit it for their specific area or needs. But at least some of the work, the legwork is already completed. Got it. Yeah, it's not it's not even trying it's not trying to push it out there. I'm just wondering if it can be and that and to really it's to the point is to make sure that whatever we develop would be the overarching um, guidelines for our 10 blocks and the rest of the city can either use it or not use it. That's their I want to make sure that we would be able to define what signage parameters would be allowed within the 10 blocks. That's all. My usual idea and the way I've seen it, signage ordinance is usually part of form-based code, at least all the form-based code I've reviewed in respective of this project, recently done in last three years in California. So I'm a little surprised to see such a high number separately. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, usually like if we look at Redwood City or El Cerrito, those are like two examples that I've been precisely looking at and some that David had sent. But signage is just a part of form based code that, you know, they'll give you what options and, you know, each business get to brand it within that frame the way they want it. But, you know, the, the guidelines are usually part of the form based code. So I'm a little surprised to see this as a separate line item. All right, so next member, Butch Coyne, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Hello, everybody. Um, a couple of notes. Um, one, 
I agree earlier with the statement that we should be looking at things uh, and prioritizing them in a way of what we need now and what we need later. Again, I think if you go into a city council and say we need a half a million dollars, they're going to pare that down and I think we should do the work for them. Um, looking at this, uh, of course, I think everybody's going to be on the same page on the form based code. We've been talking about it at multiple meetings. I think it's a priority there. Um, the all the signage, um, I understand the importance of it, but I would move that to the very bottom of the list. And how I looked at this list was more in timing rather than priorities. So if we're looking at breaking ground and moving forward in the next couple of years, that's one thing. But we've had several meetings where we're talking five years, 10 years, 12 years down the road. So looking at it from that viewpoint, what things should go to the bottom of the list? What things should go to the top of the list? Um, so I, the sign ordinance and wayfi wayfinding go into the form-based code, put it at the bottom of the list. I don't think they're a priority. <clears throat> I'm surprised. And again, this might be because I don't understand it enough. So my ignorance may be showing through. But I thought the area development impact fee program should be high. Because if we're talking about infrastructure, isn't that a core piece in order to get the shovel in the ground in the first place. So, so if we've ignored that, if we've ignored that, is that gonna cause us problems down the road? And again, I'm, I'm not quite sure the answer on that. Um, uh, the post COVID retail and office analysis. Uh, again, I think retail is very important, but I don't think it's the driving force in downtown. I think uh, WRT has said that to us multiple times that have the space for retail, but retail follows, it doesn't lead. So yes, we're gonna to wanna to have retail. We're gonna to wanna to understand what retail is like post COVID, but is that necessary at the beginning? Or, or do we have time to wait and see where this COVID stuff is going? Cause we're not putting the, the shovel in the ground in the next month, year, probably two years, a lot can happen. Do we really wanna spend the money uh, post COVID on there? Um, uh, let me just, I'm looking through um, <clears throat> the early activation. Um, uh, just give me a second. I need to find my 27 notes on this. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so again, on, on the early activation part, I understand the need for it, but the two questions that came up for me is, and again, I know we don't have the answers, when are we really gonna be able to start this project? Are we starting this project, we're hoping to have a shovel in the ground in two years, three years, or are we talking about 10 years or 20 years down the road? Because on the early activation part of it, if we're looking at two or three years down the road, absolutely could be a priority. We need to start drawing attention. We need to start getting the word out. We need to start creating a, an awareness of it. If it's further down the road, I would find it difficult for us to, to sustain funding for early activation if we're talking four or five years down the road. So I would hate to get something like that started and then all of a sudden funding dries up and we basically uh, wasted our resources on that also. Um, I think um, downtown management, same thing. I had the opportunity to be actively involved with the development of downtown San Jose. And downtown San Jose actually got many of the projects going and finally understood the direction they were heading. Was it gonna be office? Was it gonna be retail? Was it gonna be entertainment? They landed on entertainment, if you know the history of, of downtown San Jose, and then brought in the downtown association because they had some clear cut direction. So again, I think it's a priority, but I don't think it should be on the top of our list and then um, uh, the, the other two, I'm just, I, I kind of throw up in the air. So those are kind of my comments. Take them for what they're worth. Uh, thank you, Butch. Appreciate it. Um, Anna? Um, I looked at the list and uh, I agree with Matthew Reed. I, knowing how the Franklin Mall operates, which is like on a shoestring little grassroots budget um, and style of governance, um, I think number eight is very important. And the reason I 
think it's important is because I've had a conversation with the Sunnyvale downtown management group. And I realized that they do things such as um, they're managing sign ordinance. They're managing wayfinding. They do promotions for all the retail, the branding, the events, the early activation. It kind of all rolls up under number eight. So I think we, if we could get number eight in place right away and activated and involved, a lot of these bullet points would be taken care of by number eight. And that's, that's just a void in this whole project is not having that already in place. I think the chamber is a good opportunity to partner up with the chamber. They've got a business, a small business council going right now. I happen to be on that. And a few other groups that they're um, engaging and finding ways to connect with the community. Um, I think number eight is very important because it'll take care of number seven, number four, number two, number five. A lot of those things that we're concerned about branding will be taken care of by that group. As far as um, I agree with Butch, Area Development Impact Fee Program. For, I'm surprised to hear that that wasn't included. I always assumed that was part of the process of a master plan. So yeah, I think that's very important. Um, Lafayette design, I really am a big fan. I think that's an important piece of the design plan and I'd be willing to um, prioritize that because I feel like if Lafayette is fixed and make it walkable, I think we connect ourselves to the train station so much easier to the university campus. Everything we want to connect to, it seems to involve Lafayette. So I, I think that is um, in the top five. Uh, Post-COVID analysis, um, again, I think that's something that number eight would help us with. I think that, that the downtown would be their focus and they would be watching and monitoring that, recruiting retail, seeking quality retail. I mean, look at uh, Sunnyvale has some amazing small mom and pops and it's because of that entity. Um, they are super active. We could learn a lot from them. In fact, he did agree to, if we wanted him to present some of what he does for the downtown Sunnyvale, he'd be happy to be part of, uh, present to the task force to share some of his ideas. Just want to throw it out there. Great. Um, those would be my most important areas, yeah. Thank you, Anna. Uh, Shantai? Everybody, so um, I think I agree with most of what's been said. Obviously, the form-based code, since we've been talking about that for quite some time now. I would also agree with the area development program, just because, again, I mean, I think my concern is always like, you know, like how are we going to build this so people can come and, and will be able to come? Like how can they afford to, um, you know, rent out spaces in the downtown area? Um, so those would be the top two priorities. Um, and then I think the next set, I would agree with the management. I think having a group to sort of facilitate what's going on could um, set set sort of the, the stage for some of these other things to follow along as Anna was saying. Um, and I actually think also the Lafayette design, because I think the benefit of focusing on Lafayette is because we are we have that one building that's already been built there. So why not capitalize on that newness and sort of, you know, sort of bring some more attention, um, detail to that area. Um, in terms of the post-COVID retail analysis, I think that's something that could probably wait because we're still trying to understand what post-COVID is going to look like. We don't know, you know, once everybody's like, I think we're, we're starting to, at least I am starting to get plans about what is the fall going to look like despite people having the vaccine and it's still going to be mask wearing, it's still going to be symptom checks, it's still going to be, um, you know, uh, various sort of additional layers of keeping people safe. So we're not going to be returning to business as usual. So even though that would be important, I think timeline wise, I don't think it's an immediate need because we might be doing analysis that by the time things you know, are, are finally getting going and we're breaking ground that that analysis actually won't apply anymore because we will in a, be in a post post COVID world that might look very different than what we have now. Um, I think 
agreed with um, some of what others have said where I think the signage um, pieces could probably be at the bottom of the list uh, in terms of priority. And those are my comments. Well, thank you, Member Chan. Uh, Anna, did you still have your hand up or was that an accident? Sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, I think Dan, you had physically raised your hand. I yeah, I, st I still don't have the hand thing. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I think you all know how I feel about form based code, so I won't go into it. I think uh, the only comment on that, I, uh, and it was mentioned in the, I think the general body is that we are all aware of it, you know, within this group, but I think it's really important to make the public and the key decision makers understand the benefits of this and the you know, the teeth it puts into the precise plan. So um, I'd be an advocate for that. Um, I'm gonna go in order here. The sign ordinance to me is important, but I do concur with, with the group that I was also surprised that that wasn't part of uh, the form-based code or, um, you know, the plan itself, that that's, you know, that's an added cost. Um, but again, I do, I want to restate, I think it's really important that to diversify this downtown from, from others that we, we have a unique approach to that. Um, the area development impact fee, uh, I think it's going to come up probably with, um, you know, in the converse, in the, the span of this meeting, but I think it's, um, it's super important to talk about how how infrastructure improvements and, and infrastructure itself is going to be paid for. Um, and, and I think we're going to, we're going to kick ourselves if we don't focus on that uh, up front. Now the Lafayette street design, I wanted to get clarification. I think this is to Leslie and, you know, maybe most of you. Um, I always looked at this as 10 blocks. Uh, is is the Lafayette portion we're talking about from Benton to Homestead, or is it the artery that leads to it? And if so, why are we paying for that? Why is that on, you know, our dime, you know, which is limited right now? We're trying to, to allocate very, very, um, you know, uh, precious resources for that. Is that just that one block, or is it everything leading up to it? I think you'd have to look at the areas leading up to it if you're interested in modifying the street design. Would um, then the follow on was, to that? Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, this was just an item that the task force had discussed before. Um, WRT had done some images that maybe suggested Lafayette could be changed, um, and the task force was interested. Well, maybe that's a a good idea. Um, so that's how this one came about. This was Got not it. obviously in the original scope, but if you wanted to to change how Lafayette Street worked, it, it would have to go farther than just the frontage of down the downtown 10 blocks. And I, yeah, I just, yeah, I want to- It says I, steady area to the existing, steady area to the existing street cross sections to the north and south. Right. So I so think in, that's Benton to Homestead. I mean, yeah. those intersections, right? Okay, okay. That's what I read, but- Cause that's where the lane, the lanes change those sort of to just right. to the north and just to the south. Yeah. And we're talking, you know, it's 70 grand. So we're talking about a big chunk of change. So mm -hmm. if it is just that, I get it. So, um, I did university wanna, kick in? <laughs> I, yeah, no, I just wanted to, sorry, I should have raised my hand. Um, I, um, I wanted to interject because I think in looking at the scope, um, although we might be only studying a section of Lafayette, there is implications for the street and the outreach has to be more substantial than just that section. So we probably need to go back and make sure WRT understands that because they probably didn't when they came up with this amount, because there's probably actually a higher cost for this um, just to deal with the outreach. And I just want to float the idea that, you know, if that's the case, you know, I just, I, I don't want to go, hey, that's a city problem. You know, we're creating a downtown and you guys got to figure that out. We want, you know, obviously that's a, a key part of it. But, you know, as far as putting this on our tab, as it were, you know, on these 10 items, 
there are things that we really, really want. And, you know, is, you know, is there a way of splitting this up with the city or, or what have you? And I know funds are very, very tight right now. So, but that was, that was my question on that. So Dan, uh, I didn't put that at the top of my list because during our last meeting, we talked about not only Lafayette, but Monroe. And I think both are crucial. They're going to be the entrance point into the downtown. If we, and we know Lafayette is going to be the starting point. The new development on, on Monroe is too. So I think taking them separately could be an issue. But I think if we ignore that, and all of a sudden we start putting a downtown together and people do not have easy access to it, we're gonna shoot ourselves in the foot. So I, I, I don't know how we address that, but I think it's something that has to be addressed early on. You know, it, it would be like building a one-way yeah, sidewalk to the downtown and hope everybody uses it. No, and I'm not, I, I'm I, absolutely Butch, I'm not saying it's not oh, important. It's, and, and I don't you, disagree with you on that, Yeah, Dan. I just I, don't I, wanna pick I, up the tab. Yeah, yeah I, I think, how do we address, the question I guess, Rena goes to you guys is, how do we address this, this, th these are the gateways to this downtown. What is the best way to address it? I have no idea, it's not my right. expertise. I know nothing yeah. about it. That's why I'd have to go to staff and say, what do you recommend so we don't shoot ourselves in the foot? Right. So, Mr. Oh, sorry. I no, no, go, go ahead. Man. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if I can interject real quick. So just a couple of items on the funding. Um, correct. So, so obviously uh, there is no other policy direction or council direction or any budget or project to do a road diet on Lafayette Street. So there's nothing on the horizon. Of course, whether it's uh, requested as part of this process or any other process, it still comes from the same pot of city funding. Uh, it's not like this are different, uh, they're different available, you know, it's all city funding, yeah. different pot for downtown and, and different pot for this. So just want to provide that context. The um, other item on the, the road diet, uh, it, it's that uh, typically it, it does, um, you know, they, they can be more controversial. So definitely you, you might have uh, a different perspective on that specific element than the overall project. And that's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just something to consider. And I do want to um, make sure that what Rena said is a, su a super valid point uh, about the outreach. And we definitely would want to extend the outreach uh, beyond kind of probably uh, a lot of people who have been involved in the downtown redevelopment uh, because road diets usually want to extend it to make sure uh, people who typically drive through it can participate in the process uh, or people who live near it, whatever, you know, just it usually gets extended because they tend to be more controversial. So those are the few notes that the funding, you know, at the end of the day, there is no other um, project in line or, or policy direction to study it. And two, just be aware that uh, from a outreach and timeline perspective, um, these projects tend to be a little bit more controversial uh, than some things that, uh, that, that aren't, and that can create uh, its own set of uh, items you have to deal with. Like I said, not, not something that can be done, just wanna make sure that you're aware of it. Right, Thank you. and again. Manu Manuel, can if I could quickly jump into, I, and I was trying to find the BPAC agenda package from last meeting, I should have it, but I couldn't find it. I know that there is some funding that BPAC was showing for Lafayette, like bike design. And I'm sure like when you're putting in bike lanes, extensive amount of like uh, traffic volume studies are done because bike lanes also, you know, like all the similar outreach will be done. So it will be just nice to understand. I was really trying to find that packet right now. I sit on the BPAC now, I'm forgetting the extent, but there is a big portion of Lafayette that I think city already has funding or committed funding, uh, grant funding for uh, studying that uh, Lafayette Street. Yeah, and I'm specifically talking about this section. This section, we're okay, got This it. section where we're talking about uh, reconfiguring the lanes and, and I wouldn't say removing, but reducing the capacity within the lanes. We don't have any funding for that study, which is uh, pretty separate uh, than, than other areas of the city. Uh, I, I would have to go back and look at the budgets for other projects. I do know that they have grants for other projects as well, but we don't have anything uh, for this location. Um, Got it. Just to let you know, historically, we have gotten feedback on Lafayette, uh, both um, for and against and different ideas. And it's been discussed with council, but it's, there, uh, it hasn't been a uh, policy priority and a funding priority to analyze Lafayette for dif different alternatives. Okay, great. Man, man real I, quick, sorry. Sorry, Dan, hold on. I yeah, you bet. Question, sorry. 
Impact B program. I know there's there's ways to actually, you know, the city pays up front and then we get reimbursed as development projects become online and get proposed. So in that study, if we chose to do potentially other items, is there a way to recapture some of the funds that the city might, you know, front in the beginning and then be compensated for on the back end through that uh, that analysis? I, I don't know if it was my signal or your signal, Adam, but I lost you for part of that. Uh, but I think I, I got the question. So, so you're asking whether we can be reimbursed um, for the analysis work associated with this, with a future um, impact fee program. Um, I, I'm going to have to rely on maybe Leslie, Rena, or Andrew know the answer to this. But I thought with a precise plan, uh, there are some limitations for doing that. I don't think we can do that. I think you can put a in the impact fee program, the actual work to convert the street later on, but not to be reimbursed for the analysis. So I, I do Got think, it. I don't think we can do that. Um, on, the, on the, yeah, on the, and, and uh, they, you know, the impact fee program, I, you know, at least a little different, like, we'll leave it at that for now, but I don't see a, a method to do that based on kind of where we're at. It would have to be something that would have to be funded by the city without reimbursement. No worries. I just wanted to make sure we clarified that. Yeah. Thank you. I just turned my camera on. You want me to turn it back on? That's why you asked another question. <laughs> well, you made me move inside, so. I'm sorry. I didn't mean yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm heading I, in soon. I had a nice outdoor, well, so I, I apologize. I, I, think it, I think it was my internet because I was kind of on the fringe of the two networks, so it keeps jumping between the two. Okay, continue. So I agree with the comments on signage wayfinding. I, I put that down uh, down the list. Um, and I did have a city comment on that, but I'll hold it. Um, post COVID retail, I, um, as far as retail as, as a whole, respectfully disagree with my, my, uh, esteemed butch here on retail. I think we need to, um, immediately study it. I'm not saying plan it, but, you know, immediately start studying, um, you know, the, uh, the intricacies of it, especially post COVID. Um, I'd be, if we did go after a post COVID retail, I think it was Greensfelder was one. I, I believe that's who yeah. we were going to use. Um, I'd be curious, you know, as we, as we talk with them on, are they going on pre COVID, you know, statistics or, you know, trends, or are they taking a look at, a, at countries that have opened? And, and looking at those trends, you know, because this is a, a very tricky thing post COVID. But um, I, you know, again, I think that goes to our, and I'm losing, I can't see in the dark here, but um, the downtown management entity, I agree. I think that's, um, you know, a, a super important thing from the standpoint of, of going out. You know, if you go to a retailer, we're, we, our group has found that, you know, it's taken two years to get one anchor uh, to the point of yes. Um, and then, you know, from that point, they've got a very specific layout. Um, you know, so I think it's something we need to look at up front. We, we don't necessarily need to work on, you know, carving out something for it, but, but, um, I would advocate to the group that you take a look at retail very quickly because even though it is not important to a banker, it's most important to the citizen buying that apartment above um and i think that is all i had right now yep that's it thank you thank you dan um is there anyone who has not spoken yet that would like to speak on the dctf i can go uh go ahead Great. I was just waiting to hear from everyone. Um, I am just kind of like in the process of the scope you sent, Leslie. Thank you. I also read the scope we already have uh, as part of our initial RFP. Um, and, you know, kind of don't want to be taking sides, but I do understand that our initial budget was pretty low for the amount of work we are asking the consultants to do. So some of these numbers, I understand where they are coming from. 
I totally agree with form-based code. I just don't see the need why sign ordinance has to be a separate thing. Uh, and the level of detail that another 18,000 will bring, whatever is part of form-based code should be fine for us. And that should be in a way that it gives flexibility to the actual merchant, you know, kind of use their own font or their colors and their LED lights versus non-LED lights, you know, kind of that flexibility. I don't wanna write it too constructive. I feel like having extra ordinance at times just make it too constructive, like restrictive, not constructive, like restrictive. So that's my thing. Area development impact fee, I totally agree with that number. I think that's something we really need because that will also help us negotiating the land value and the RFP negotiations we will go through. So we definitely need that. But at the same time, I, and I'm not an expert and this is something I was hoping to hear more as a business improvement district. So that like, you know, it kind of also help us set up the BID, which is number eight, but I'm hoping that this impact fee will also help us figure out how we fund a business improvement district or a downtown association as part of this area. It's just not the infrastructure, but it's also the operations piece of downtown because I do agree with everyone and Matthew, I'm glad Matthew sent it that eight is the most important thing. Like it's the important thing. I'm, I do not see a lawyer uh, in the mix of the consultants that they have sent, usually these things need a little bit more of a legal counsel for it to be really done and tied together. So I don't see that there. So hopefully the city attorney will be able to, council office will be able to support that process, but it will be just good to make sure that whatever the consultants propose under number eight is legally binding you know it's it's they're helping us create that legal entity because creating it's kind of like creating an llc or a 501c3 whatever they are really like this money is really going to do that than just like a pdf report with a bunch of words that we can find on ourselves google it and get examples from other places so this is really helping us put that legal entity together which i did not find in the scope at least defining really clearly that piece because that's the value for money for me. But if that says that, oh, this organization is going to do X, Y, Z things, there are like, I can send you 10 examples in the next two days of what that's going to be like. So that uh, Lafayette Street design, I totally agree. I'm just a little surprised, like what's the additional work they are doing beyond that I have already done. I do understand there'll be traffic uh, volume study, but I thought that was part of the CEQA because we're already studying like 10 intersections as part of the CEQA. So I'm not sure what additional traffic volume studies they're gonna be doing because they have like the design sections, they have been drawn and they we have, we have commented on it last week. So I'm still not sure what level of extra design there is. Would you like some uh, information on that as to kind of what typically goes into a scope for that type of work? I would like, I mean, what I, I can, like. I can briefly describe it real quick. Yeah, go, if it's go ahead. yeah, yeah. So, so what they, what they had in the original scope was an assumption that the road was going to stay as is. So that makes the analysis very simple because the road stay as is, you just add the additional traffic to the roadway. So when you're doing, and I'll call it a road diet, just because mm -hmm. when I used to do this, that's what they were called. I don't know if they're still called that, but I call them, I still call them road diets. Uh, when you do a road diet, it's a totally different analysis because you're not just looking at what the new, where the new traffic is going, but you're looking at the existing traffic within the corridor and you're reducing the capacity of the roadway. And then you have to look at what the impacts or no impacts, the operational out of reducing that traffic and you also have to look at where typically what happens is the traffic's also gonna go somewhere else. So then you're also expanding the scope to look at those side streets. So you're, to, you're doing a full analysis on the existing traffic, the background traffic and the proposed project traffic. Then you're doing a full traffic redistribution to figure out where everything's gonna go. So this is beyond the current scope, where everyone's gonna go. And then you analyze all the corridors where the additional traffic's going, including taking counts to see how much more traffic you're gonna be adding to those corridors. In a grid like this, you know, typically you wanna look at all those grid streets to see you know, uh, you know, how many cars are gonna go on what street and, and, mm -hmm. and other street, and if there's any impact and operational issues associated with that. In addition to that, um, it expands the community outreach 
beyond kind of the area that you mm -hmm. have today to a more regional outreach uh, to make sure you talk to everyone who um, would have would want to have input on a road diet, which is usually, kind of like I say, it's, it's much more significant. So it's quite a bit of scope. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, um, you know, I, I think the fact that it's, it's rolled, uh, they, they can be much more expensive than that. I agree. Uh, this is a shorter section. Uh, I think that's why the cost is a little bit less. Um, but, you know, I've done road diets where the, the cost between outreach analysis and everything else related to it uh, can go two, three, four hundred thousand dollars. So there's I, a lot more work beyond just studying what's actually out there, just the whole redistribution of traffic and where it's going and doing all that analysis. This is all new work that wasn't planned. Thanks, Manuel. And I, I kind of agree that's why I was a little concerned with the 67,000 number. Like, is, is it not the full scope? And that's it's when not. I was... Yeah. So yeah. other thing I was wondering if we want to do it, I would encourage it to go at least to El Camino like El Camino to Homestead, I feel like technically it will have to go, but the current written scope does not say that. Can we but, get clarification on that? Yeah, because yeah. when it says north to south, it doesn't really give us. Yeah, I think just those two blocks is not worth doing it. If yeah. we have to do it, then let's just do it all the way from El Camino to Homestead where it kind of changes back yeah. again. So then it will make sense to spend any money. Uh, wayfinding and sign program. I know there is some wayfinding money in their original scope. Beyond that, I feel like the branding and really figuring out the whole art piece, it can be pushed out. A lot of times this can be also made part of the RFP, like pushed a cost on the developer because developer would want to brand their project. And you can ask, you know, at that point, community can give a lot of input and can also be part of the downtown management entity. Once they do it, they can write grants and you know, art funding, a lot of these things can pay for it. So I don't see that as a big ticket item right now. Post COVID retail, I, I would rather say retail focus. If we have to put the money to get, I wouldn't call it like post COVID <laughs> retail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would just say we 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 have the small budget for retail initially, and I'm happy to expand that budget for retail so that we can get exact understanding of what mix of chain versus local and mom and pop and kiosk, like to get that real mix and grain of retail we want and have that strategy written. I'm not sure so much of office we're in Silicon Valley, and it's these the numbers that I'm seeing in my professional shoes that office is bouncing back pretty well in Silicon Valley, so I don't see the need, but I do not mind putting another five to seven grands in retail and not call it post retail, but just saying, how can we create a really amazing retail district and have the right mix of food versus boutiques? Like, and how, like how? Like, does the city have to pay TI? Do we find, need to find money for TI? It's like, you know, really understanding the retail strategy to make it successful. So I think that scope, I don't agree with the scope item, but I do see the value in that money if the scope can be adjusted. Early activation, I really don't wanna speak for it because I'm kind of pushing for early activation project. So I see that as a conflict of interest, uh, but I do agree with some of the comments made that it can be a community driven process and we don't have to pay for another PDF report that much money where we can accomplish a lot of built project product in that much money if the city has it. Uh, project design review, I think this is more related to RFP phase. Sorry, I did not get to reading that. And additional DCDF meetings, I would say instead of one, we should add a few more. I think this is just adding one, or I think this is per meeting. Leslie, I understand the money, mm -hmm. so you should have a little bit more flexibility. We might need their presence a lot more in the process. So that's kind of my comments. Adam, can I kick in for a quick? Yeah, go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. So uh, form-based code, I, one thing that I, I, I noticed that really concerns me about the form-based code, if I read the Claremont, is that it puts, um, we don't have a, a good architecture review process in this city. Um, I was on that committee for four years. And since I left in 2012, there was a really brief time that we had an actual architect uh, weighing in and right now it's in the city planners hands and and you know you can do all of this you can do form based code and everything but if you don't have professional practicing architects weighing in on the designs of this downtown you could have a problem okay so i read that our that that 
form based code from Claremont and it said the director of planning will decide a lot of things and so we need to what I, I guess my greater question is does WRT help form a committee in terms of a process and organize that or does the city do that but we need to do this sooner than later uh, and get the, ahead of the game on that because hey Rob yes. yeah sorry sorry to interrupt did you oh. read did you read Sergeant's proposal I I didn't I, I just did the Claremont but I, I just I, I think you should you okay. should read it because, because what it they're doing it? yeah well they're they're you know there's things that we you know we all need to talk about I think okay. you know publicly about you, that yeah so that, that's fine I just wanted to, to bring your point it up as a it's in a little bit of as an Achilles Hill where where our way architecture review is done right now the second thing is signage and I do generally agree, it, it's super important because uh, it can be done really bad, but I do think that um, uh, we need to make sure that the form factor and placement and fonts can all be different. We don't want this to be like a homogenous thing, but it is important. Uh, the other thing is all this is still negotiable. If they put something down, it doesn't mean that's what we're paying, right? We could say, we'll take five of those things, but we want them from X, okay? And then the last thing is the Lafayette. The university has half of the street frontage on that. I'm just curious if the university, maybe some dialogue needs to be opened about them kicking in a little bit in terms of that, that fee, because they're going to benefit just as much as the downtown. So um, it's not a butch question. It's a university question. I think um, um, just to jump in on that, Rob, and, yeah. and Manuel, maybe you know, I think when we did our master plan four or five years ago, I think there was a road study for that. I'm not sure if it was El Camino or Lafayette, but if we did, there would be a report in the city, if I'm not mistaken. So do we have any idea if there is that? A road study for what specifically? Which I just I remember, remember um, when we did our master, our, the university master plan, I think we did a, some, some sort of road study. And as I said, I don't know if it, I can get more information on it, and I'm not sure if it was El Camino because we were looking at expanding across the street, whether it included Lafayette or not. Uh, it might have. The thing it wouldn't have included, which is the part we need to do, is the analysis to remove the lane to do the road right. diet. So it wouldn't have included that. So we have all that. I think, you know, and I, I, I would have to go back and talk to transportation, but they did discuss kind of all the information they already have. And typically we have background volumes, you know, the existing volumes, background volumes, all that information. We would do that anyway, as Tatisha said just for this project is the lane removal part that wouldn't have been part of yours and it would have been anything that we have on the background. Okay, thank you. So that was pretty much it. Other things I'll just say is about this early activation, all that I think we have a very strong, as Anna had mentioned and others, we already have a strong core group of DC, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Reclaim, Old Quad Group, there's the chamber. You know, I'm not so sure that we need somebody to actually get us going in terms of that. But I like the idea of having the person from Sunnyvale come and speak at, at a next meeting to understand how they, they proceeded, okay? So before we spend, I mean, I think in terms of priority, you know, we don't necessarily have to spend it right now. It, it might be something yeah. that's asked in three months, six months. Mm -hmm. So I'll be quiet now, thank you. My Another just quick question or comment on Lafayette is, I know kind of like Lafayette is part of the bigger, bigger city network. And just trying to understand, you know, as Butch mentioned, because of the city's master plan, some work was done. How much can we leverage anything done related to the El Camino Real master plan because it connects and if there was any work done in that. And now, you know, with the BART coming in and all the, you know, station and everything, if there's, future planning work that's going to happen in this area if that can absorb the Lafayette Street design as part of that work because if there is a planning process upcoming then maybe that could absorb Lafayette Street in that process and we as a downtown we propose that this is our preferred section and not do the engineering piece of it right now that's okay. as a prioritization yeah, and I would say that would be a question, right? I mean, it uh, obviously we uh, we have to look at what's in the future, what it would cost, what it could be funded by, and if there's council policy direction for us to do that at that time. Yeah.
All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, I mean, I think you guys kind of wrapped up most of my comments. Um, so I don't think I'm going to kind of go on. I think what would be good is we should probably go to public comment before we vote, Leslie, I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Okay. So let's go to the public comment. We'll open that up. If there's no uh, no one else from the DCTF that would like to speak on the matter, I don't see anyone's hand. There's one hand. Oh, sorry. There's one hand raised. Atisha, is your hand up or? Yeah. No, I think it's Jonathan. No, no. Jonathan. Oh no, your hand's still up. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to. <laughs> no worries. Okay, Jonathan Evans, uh, you're you'll be free to speak very much. Yeah, Jonathan, oh. you should speak. Hi, can hi, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Uh, my first comment is a little bit about the process. Um, it looks like this is a, a useful document that lists actually all of the, the potential services and some more detailed information about it. It would have been great if the community had been able to get that document ahead of time. Uh, I noticed it's not posted with the agenda or, or in the packet. Um, it'd be helpful, or, or at least maybe this will at least be posted, I hope, with the, the meeting um, in the end. Uh, afterwards uh but it, yeah it'd be helpful yeah. to get these yeah. type of documents <laughs> um as just part of the meeting notice uh so some of my comments are based on um, what the discussion here then and the, the 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 listing i don't have more details about what these are so the first thing i wanted to say was um what the community is really looking for um at least what the old call resident association is and other people in the community are looking for and that's retail i mean that's the main thing that has driven um the community's interest in the downtown you know we want shops we want um restaurants we want things we can walk to that are in our neighborhood and and that's what's setting this off and you know um yeah we understand that the retail is kind of comes after comes with the, the larger amount of housing um and that's a real but that's the most important thing so i completely disagree with butch on this because i think we i agree with atisha that you know we need to make sure that we have the right study so we're building the right retail so that we can attract those businesses and if we don't then to some extent this entire downtown revitalization is kind of all for naught. you know, we'll just end up not meeting the community's needs. So to me, that's maybe potentially anything that helps us make sure we can meet that vision is the number one thing. And I think closely tied to that is the form based zoning code and making sure that we have the right process in place so that, you know, once we have this vision done, um, we get the vision that the community has um, come up with and, and get that built. Um, and I, I do agree with some of the other analysis why I do think Lafayette being like on a road debt and more walkable would be great. Um, I would ask if instead of funding it as part of this process, maybe that can come a little later. I know Prude Ridge has their complete streets program that's being done right now and they have some funding to at least do kind of the study and design, if, even if they don't have any funding to make changes. Uh, I wonder if there's any way we could get those type of grants or as people have discussed, um, if you have that uh, management entity or you know later on you know we can get some funding to, to help pay for for that um, but I wouldn't put that as important to me as, as like forge based code or you know making sure that we can get uh, retail in the area so uh, so thank you that's those are my, uh, my comments thank, thank you Jonathan Jonathan are there any other members of the public that would like to speak on this up oh, Patricia hey, hey Patricia can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Great. So I'm not going to repeat everything Jonathan said. So I agree with him with a bunch of that stuff. Um, I think the activation bit, I think a lot of the uh, local organizations can um, take up a lot of the activations. Um, I think like what we actually need is to have some sort of framework to plug in, but not necessarily like a program that's built out because like we can be creative, like coming into it. Um, and I think like when we have the management entity that can be the entity that will man can, that can manage that. So that would be my only addition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak on the matter before we close the public comment? All right, seeing that we have no more hands, uh, we would like to close public comment on item number one. We don't have to take a vote, right, Leslie? We just close it. Or are we supposed uh, to? Yeah. yeah. Vote, right? Or do we, we, we could take a vote. Is yeah, there, yeah. Let's take a vote. <laughs> Let's just do it. Just do it. 
Just do it. Nike. So moved. All right. Second. Second. Thank you. Second. All. all right. Third. Closing public comment for item number one. Please say aye. 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 All opposed to closing public comment, please say no. The ayes have it. Public comment is. All right, so we'll move to let's, uh, now that we've all discussed it, let's go ahead and just go line item by line item. So, uh, Adam, Anna's hand is raised, and I don't know if she. Oh, Anna, are you, are you, do you want to speak again, Anna? I'm sorry. I lowered it. Oh, oh, it went away. It went away. At least you have one. I only, <laughs> I only get to see four people, so I apologize if I miss you. It's not deliberate. So, um, just if I ever do, please speak up. So, the joys of uh, web, web uh, community. <laughs> so, that being said, we will move to voting. And I think if everyone agrees to a. Uh, Priority and a sec, you know, a secondary item. I think we just keep it to that and to keep it clean and not try to number them out or anything like that. Um, you know, the comments that you know everybody has made been really valid and great points. And I think you know, realistically, they they all really are for, for the most part needed and uh, really overdue to making the project successful. So. Um, I, and just so everyone knows, I have zero problems with going and asking for all of it. <laughs> I think <laughs> I, I want all of our hard work and the city's hard work and everybody's hard work that has already been put forth to get us this far to actually be fruitful and um, viable for, you know, everyone, including, you know, community staff and even future developers. So um, I don't want to shortchange us in the long run for a, a few dollars. So uh going going up to the top we'll go to number one so that's form-based code so i think the way we, we should do this is we'll just go all in favor of being a priority one we'll say aye all in favor of being a priority two we'll say aye and we'll take the tally that way um and if there's any if there's a tie we can we can discuss the matter and see if anyone wants to uh to change change their opinion is that fair because i know we, we we're losing matt so we don't have an odd number thanks matt <laughs> one of the days when we're making the most votes <laughs> the one day where we're voting on the most uh, or, or or deciding on the most options he decides not to attend so, greatly appreciated can i go adam, back on excuse adam, his example the only, the only thing i would say adam is relating to lafayette again I, I i personally think that the university has a lot to benefit and i mean we can vote on saying we want it but i don't know if some discussions can happen with the university about it because you know we're asking the city for this money, you know. Or so. grant funds. Yeah, I I kind of agree with Jonathan's comments on Lafayette that if I have to do Lafayette, I would write just do the whole big study. Doing it for like those six hundred feet is not going to make a big difference. It's going to rather be a bottleneck. <laughs> so if I have to do it, I would just you know maybe. You, some someone from DCTF should come to BPAC and make a proposal for a grant that city staff should write, but there are grants to do that work and we should do the whole, like get the whole half, quarter million, half a million that we need to do it and do it really right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think my, my, my heartache is, I mean, yeah, Rob, I agree. But what I don't wanna do is, it, I mean, it's ours to manage. We can go negotiate with them and, and see if they're interested or willing and that's fine. But I don't, I mean, I think we have the most to lose and the most energy and effort put in from a city and community standpoint, sure. you know, for 30 or 50 or even a hundred thousand dollars at the end of the day. I mean, at, you know, if we actually are successful in what I believe all of us are here to do and um, create, then really it's, it, it, it's just a drop. In the it's a piddling, yeah. yeah. No, I get it. You no, know, I'm just... trying to. I'm trying not to be, you know, penny wise and dollar dumb here, uh, yeah. you know, and, and sit here and get into the minutia. But I, I totally agree, and I think that conversation we had, and, and you know, based on the conversation we've had about Lafayette, it looks, it sounds like there's going to be a lot more expenses to be had. So maybe if we throw our hat in the ring early, and then say, hey, you pick up the second part, that might be, yeah, you know, something that shows the university that we're willing to contribute um, from a community and city's perspective. So, you know, be a, be a, be a community member and a partner to make this successful. Well, in we particular, Lafayette, you know, rather than being a higher or a 
medium priority, this is the one thing that sounds like there needs to be more investigation. Yeah. We obviously want to say yes to, but we are questioning the fee and whether it could be either, you know, funded by grants or if yeah. there's already money with the city or if it can be shared with the university. So it's not that we want to vote against mm -hmm. it, but we just question whether that amount is the right amount. How about if we just throw out it as a priority one, but then with a caveat that we need a little bit more information relating to the, it, does it go to El Camino like that? You know, what, what, what's the extent of it? Yeah. Mr. Chair, if I could add just one more thing, mm -hmm. and just to make sure that we're kind of we all have the same understanding. One is I just want I know I said this before that there is no other current city funding identified for this work, so I want to, I want to just make sure that at this point there isn't. And um, whether through this process or a different process, staff would need some sort of policy direction that there's interest from the city council to do a road diet on this section of road. Uh, so I just wanted to note that. And then the third piece is the grant funding. So staff is uh, very successful at getting grants. Uh, there's a process for grants and grant writings and certainly having policy direction for something to study is one of the first processes. But I can't commit you that it'll be done with a certain, certain, certain time frame, correct? Because one is uh, there's grant cycles that occur and we work within those grant cycles. Uh, and two, um, as much as we would like to be successful in every grant, that we write, <laughs> we can't promise you that we would be successful when we write the first grant for this project, right? And that cycle might not be for one, two, three years, whatever the time frame may be. Uh, there is funding out there, you know, out of uh, Measure B and a few other programs. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm clear with you, kind of how these things work, so there's no expectation that uh, staff can go write uh, a grant tomorrow for something like this for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Uh, Manuel, can I ask you a tag question on that? So how do we prioritize which city corridors or, you know, which projects we are writing grant? Because, of course, like every street in our city needs a grant, but how, what's the prioritization Beautiful process out. internally if we yeah. can push this on the higher so priority? We, so, so we do have a, a pedestrian master plan, right, and a bike master plan. And those plans, council approved plans come with priorities. So staff okay. has policy documents that they work off to pursue grants. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, whatever, because you also have to look at the grants and mm -hmm. which projects might qualify best, right? But does does that does for us, there's other grants also, but I'm focused on pedestrian and, and, and bike grants. Those those provide you the policy direction. Uh, from Got the council it. to go after those. And that's why I wanted to note that there's there's like three things here, right? There's the funding part of it, right? And who funds it and what the scope is and everything else. There's the policy discussion. Uh, road diets, typically we like to get, uh, actually we always like to get policy direction from council that they're interested at a minimum <laughs> in studying it. And three, on the grants, you have to look at grant cycles and kind of what the right grant might be where this kind of project would be successful. Okay, I think Measure B funding cycle is upcoming or? It, I, they vary, right? They vary, and they, yeah. they vary. And then there's other, you know, there's other grants as well. There's MTC grants that, uh, um, and, you know, I'm just throwing an example like yeah. MTC grant. There's all, there's different grants that occur at different times. Uh, what, what we try to do is we look at the grants and look at the projects that have been determined that we want to try to accomplish. Some some are for study, right? Like you mentioned, the bike lane that we're going to be studying. Some are already going to construction. Typically, it's a two-phase grant, right? So you'd get the grant to study it, and then you have to go get the grant for construction, depending on how you do it. So like I said, this is just, uh, I want to make sure that the process is clear to you or considering and voting on, on what you want to look at. So um, I'm thinking of those three different things that uh, I would be focused on for uh, staff to be able um, if, uh, to work on this and what the timing might mm -hmm. or could be. Actually, I have one more tech question on timing, and this is mostly for Leslie. I do see some months here in the list, is it our, and I know there is an overall schedule, is is adding more some of these tasks gonna add more time to the schedule or is, are these overlapping tasks? Um, yeah, yeah, they, it, it would be in addition to the time. I mean, obviously some of them will tack on to the current um, schedule and there's a, let me go to it, there's a, 
Yeah, it says like plan adoption by 2020 yeah. January. So like the, the, the form based code, you could start that work now. Technically, you could start that work now and it could go at the same time as a precise plan adoption, right? If that was something mm -hmm. that got funded. Um, but also you could do that task after the precise plan gets adopted, right? So it could, it could go, it could go Either both way. ways. Yeah. Got it. Was, Got it. Was a, I think, yeah, I see it now. Yeah. And Leslie, I don't know if this was accounted for in the schedule, and, I just, and we might have not put it in yet, depending that if the council does decide they want to fund some of this, we'll have to come back to them with an, actually a formal council action to appropriate yeah. the funds and also amend the contract. Uh, so I just want to be aware that um, that's not part of the schedule there in the additional right. months, but that is yeah. part of something staff would have to do that would add a, a couple more months to the process. Manuel, yeah. I know I spent three months negotiating the initial contract with Leslie. <laughs> it takes a while, right? It takes a while. It's not easy. So, I mean, yes. Manuel and Leslie, to that point, I mean, none of these items look like they actually affect CEQA, which is really our time constraint, right? Be potentially, Manuel. And I know you had mentioned that it might not be for the uh, street uh, easement. I don't know if you have any more update on that. And you put the list on yeah, uh, back sorry, on sorry, Leslie. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. that's okay. Because yeah. I do want to. I do want to know. I think there are some items here that yeah. do affect CEQA. So I want to. Like the, the form based it, code it, would affect CEQA because it would require its own CEQA. So if you'd start that now, you need to add that to your CEQA process. Lafayette uh, would affect CEQA. Mm -hmm. Um. I think that's really. Those are Maybe probably. Those. Yeah. The sign ordinance will also require CEQA. Um. So, I feel like that's an item that that could happen. So later. does that mean when it affects equal, like we we couldn't do an amendment amendment to it at that point, or we would be able to do an amendment for form based code and signage? If it's part of the project description, so if it's something we added now, we would need to add that to our CEQA description because it's a known project. So, um, if this is something we're intending to do after the specific plan is adopted we don't need to include it necessarily um, and you could then tack on to the environmental that was already done for CEQA uh, for for the downtown precise plan so you use that as your base and then include any additional analysis for whatever the project is. Leslie mm -hmm. I do I do want to note though and this is without checking in with them I would assume the costs would go up at that point though for sure yeah CEQA is not included in any would, of this it would be doing their own separate CEQA at that point instead of incorporating right. into this process so those right. numbers yeah. would need to go up for the additional CEQA document right, right. Yep. and but okay. if we do it now then it our CEQA budget remains same um a CEQA budget will go up a little bit if we added if if we added the form based code and, and for sure Lafayette, if that was added, that the sequel would need to go up because it's not in the current scope for them to consider. Uh, okay. Uh, hold on, Atisha. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to. Sorry. There's, there's something that's extremely important that we have to figure out before we vote. And that is, how does this affect the other piece? And that's the easement deal that we're getting. So Manuel, you had, you had mentioned last week, uh, last meeting that you were working potentially on not having to complete a CEQA or do something different for that easement? Is that still in process or? Yeah, we we uh, we got uh, the, the contract executed with our outside counsel who's going to help staff with that process. Uh, I met with Prometheus to let them know we were going to kickstart the process. Uh, still working out the details about whether we can go ahead with separate CEQA, a, a CEQA exemption, different CEQA. We're going to have to wait as part of this. But we're going to get it started uh, to see what our what our options are. So the um, our, our outside counsel who helped us with the initial one is is back under contract, and we're going to start the work. And I met with Prometheus uh, last week uh, to let them know that they would be receiving. It's all formal, so we have to send letters to them. So I didn't want to yeah. surprise them with a letter after a year, year and a half, yeah. after a year and a half. <laughs> so we met to let them know that we were kickstarting the process. So we are starting. I don't have the full answer yet for you whether okay. it's. Going so do you, do you know what roughly your timeline would be to be able to, you, and you might not know because I know this is kind of a unique situation, but when you think we would know definitively if we're going to have to do a separate CEQA or, you know, I mean, because four to six months is going to push us basically to the brink, yeah. right? I, I uh, let me, 
let, I think at this point, just because we're kickstarting, I probably, I don't have a schedule laid out yet, but I probably need at least a couple months before I can give you a, a more well-informed answer. Um, but uh, at least a couple months, and at that point, we'll know which uh, direction we can we can go with. Which is not necessarily bad. I think if you're looking at updating the contract and modifying and everything else, um, we'll be able to kind of. I'll try to work it in parallel to that process for this additional work that yeah, comes. Yeah, I just get I, I just get worried because we're now talking about you know yeah we're going to go April six to ask for potential funding. Then we're going to have to go back to a council meeting to make a formal directive to add funding. I mean, all that takes time, right? I mean, in the process. And so even though they're saying that it's going to take them four to six months, that's after PO's released and they're actually able to schedule their workload. So, I mean, realistically, this could potentially be an eight month delay, at least, you know, eight to nine month delay. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I mean, I, you know, you, you and I have spoken. I, I, I want to make sure that we try to hit those dates. On well, the I, agreement. <laughs> no, I, so that's what we're looking at this parallel track is I do have the same concerns and I, I've expressed those concerns to the task force as yeah. well uh, to emphasize, you know, and obviously we all want to, we, we have a lot of goals here, but that's definitely one of my goals is making sure that we can get the next step on that, uh, those agreements executed. Mm -hmm. So Leslie, I think, did they give us a proposal? I thought we had asked for what would it be to just do a a sequel on the street. Did we get something on that or do we have a, a, a ROM at least for that? No, um, like Manuel said, that's something that he's separately working on. Okay. So um, they did not give us a, a and, CEQA. And Manuel, in the, if I remember correctly in the budget uh, for the street easement, there was no provisions for a separate CEQA, right? It was just the um, easement, per, you know, it's not a purchase, right? But it's the easement fee. Yeah, it's a, it's the I call it it's fine that you know, easement purchase. the purchase of the permanent no, I, I right away is, purchase of a right away easement is fine. Okay. It's by this way to explain it. No, you know at the time right uh, before COVID delays and of course we had a little expansion of scope on this. We had to, we had we had given us ourselves four years on yeah. this, so we felt we had um, sufficient time. time. But now we're in a little bit of a, a tight <laughs> time frame. <laughs> so, I mean, I. Per personally, I, I just the way this is going and with COVID and, you know, just everything. I really think we need to earmark some money for a separate sequel for the street easement. I mean, there, you know, without that, uh, um, really, it kind of it kind of undermines the entire project's viability. Um, and I don't trust that by the time we go through the process to get the additional funding and get, you know, we all know how this goes, right? We think it might take three months and it ends up taking six months, right? I mean, we can kick the can, but now is the time to do it. I mean, this is what I have conversations with my construction crews all the time is like, don't wait until the 11th hour to, 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 to basically fire off the alarm. It's like, I think we can identify it. It's potentially going to be a hot topic and, and catch us in a, in a awkward position. And so I think it needs to be addressed now, personally. And just so the task force know, my intent that was that um, I was gonna have that conversation separately with the council because the, um, you know, the, uh, I think the, um, the, the right of way easements have had their own separate process as well. So if we needed additional funding and we looked at options for CEQA and I, I think there are gonna be options. I just don't wanna to commit to anything mm -hmm. because I haven't gone to the right channels to verify it. Um, my, my intent was to go back as part of this, as part of that process, if we needed additional funding for a CEQA or specific CEQA to the, for that purpose, um, that's, I was going to ask for funds as part of that process. Uh, right. Certainly, I think it's important to note it for the council. That's, this is a priority for the task force, but I was anticipating uh, that if we needed more funds for that purpose, that I was going to approach the council separately as, since you know we, we had multiple so, meetings with the council on this item. No, that's great. Thank you, Manuel. So I think what I'm going to do, or you know, as long as the task force is okay with it is, since we don't have an actual cost for that separate breakout, but I, I still want to make sure that they're hearing it and repetitively from mul multiple angles. I mean, Manuel, it's great that you're having that conversation, but I think it's really important for them to hear it from us as well, how important it is and that we don't have a cost and that we leave it to you through your parallel um, activities to get that completed. But if the funds are needed, 
um, they are needed. And there is no, you know, um, you know, kind of beating around the bush or, 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 hey, we weren't aware of it or anything like that. It's like, you know, and if Manuel, it's possible to pro potentially get at least a ROM for them um, or us to be able to slate like, hey, you know, the rough order of magnitude for this separate seek was going to be 50K or 100K or whatever it may be, just so that they're aware of it when they're looking at all of this. Because I know, you know, as costs come in for projects, you know, nobody wants to be blindsided. I'd much rather have a little a, a scare number in the beginning. And, you know, over the time, as, as things unfold, we end up not needing that budget number. And, you know, it, it's better to ask now and, and have it in the, in the budget than not have it. You know what I mean? So, so for my, my comfort level at this point, just because I do know, like we have spoken internally and we have explored options, I just need to uh, also discuss with my outside counsel, right, what the options might be. I, I'm, not ready to, I, I'm not ready to have that discussion with the council as to what it would cost, because I think the options vary so much. Uh, I probably need another month or so. I, I think certainly uh, we're starting to work on it uh, now, and that's important, and we'll do that. Uh, I probably would defer, ask the council to give me a little more time to come back to them with a better number than what would be a guess for me at this point. Cause I don't feel, I don't feel comfortable with that based on the information that I have today, just because uh, we do think, you know, just based on what we looked at internally, it could be a very small cost, but uh, if something comes up as we start the process, it could be a very different cost. And I, I just don't have enough information mm -hmm. where I would feel comfortable just giving the council a guess. Uh, to, you know, well, I, I get what you're saying about go well, with a high number if it's lower, but I, I always I'll, prefer I'll, to give him my best estimate uh, of what it's actually going to be. Don't worry, I'll be I'll I'll be the uh, the bearer of bad news. I'll tell him to plan for another 250k. So, <laughs> hey, it will not if, be 200. I can tell you, well, it will not be 250k. Man, well, if they don't use it. This task force will. So, <laughs> I can I can assure the council it will not be 250k. I know. I'm just, that I that's, know. Why, that's why I threw it out there. I just I yeah. All right. Thank you though. I appreciate it. Of course. All right. So getting back to it. Sorry. I just wanted to make sure that was you know discussed. So. Uh, is, does everybody is everybody okay with the idea? And I guess we could actually have a third, which is priority number one, priority number two, and not not needed. I guess there's really three options. Would everybody agree with that logic? Yes. Okay. So sure. let's let's do that. So we'll do um, we'll just take an an I vote, and I'm I'm sure Les, I'm going to give her a minute because she's probably writing something down. She's trying to <laughs> making buckets. Her. We'll give her. Yeah, so we'll do three options. We'll do priority one, priority two, and not needed. Okay, go ahead, I'm ready. All right, so for number one, form-based code, and I want, let, let's do this, hold on, before, so we're not just all saying one or two or whatever, let's, let's can we read off the names? Hold on, let me, sorry. I have a list, don't I? Yes, I do. I'm gonna read them off based on the agenda. So please do not say anything until I call your name, just so that that way it doesn't create uh, a headache for Leslie. So um, for item number one, form-based code, can you please give give your priority one, priority two are not needed, uh, member, uh, co-chair, Andersack? Number one. Okay. Member mayor. One. Member whom? You might be on mute. Or Bon Hoon. Bon Hoon, sorry. Oh, me? Okay. Yeah, one. Sorry. So, <laughs> sorry, Deborah. It, it underlined weird. I apologize. <laughs> one. one. Uh, member Vargas Smith. Did you say one? One. Okay. Uh, member, member Coin. One. Member Ty. One. Member Varshney. Atisha? One, got it. Oh, perfect. Sorry, I, I can't see anybody because I got the other screen up, so I apologize. And then I would say one as well. All right, item number two, sign ordinance for downtown. Uh, Co-chair Andersack? Andersack. Um, okay, again, bucket, so bucket two is not it, as necessary. It, it's not as necessary, but it would still be a request. 
I put it in one, but I want it under form based code. But yeah, put it in one. Okay. Member Mayor? One. Member Bond Hoon? One, although I agree it should be included in the form based code. Okay. Uh, Member Vargas Smith? It would be one and uh, agree it should be part of form based code. I thought there was a mention in his letter about that. So we need a clarification. I think this is because they're going to do an actual ordinance update. That's that's yeah. the biggest cost. It's the yeah. ordinance update. Yeah. yeah. Me Member Quinn? Two. Uh, Member Ty? Uh, bucket two, not not as necessary, still needed. Uh, Member Varshney? Uh, bucket two. I do agree, like whatever is a part of the farm base code should be sufficient. We don't need extra. That's my. And I agree. Mm -hmm. I, I would say number two as well. So I don't I didn't I didn't tally that. Uh, Leslie, is that four to four? Ah no, <laughs> Matt, where are you? We'll go to, we'll go to yeah, Matt. You know who wants to text Matt? Thanks a lot for showing up. Uh, well, well, I'll just so, change so, mine to two. I'll, I'll just change it. Okay, two. Rob. Again. Rob's gonna okay. be two. So yeah, two. and I said one with a caveat. So yeah, you know. I think, okay. Fine. Yeah, and I and I think Leslie, since it doesn't sound like we're actually asking for the full amount of funds in this on the six, we're actually just asking them for the consideration. Um, it sounds like there might be a little bit of, of ability to negotiate with the, the the contractor. Is that correct? Potentially, or clarify. Well, sure. Yeah, I mean, all of this is okay. um, draft. Okay. No, that's that, that's good. I, I think. Again, this is kind of to my point about where this is the high number and then we can go and work with them and kind of curtail it. So, all right. Well, I can promise Leslie is really good at negotiations. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Just wait till you work with me at Tisha. I don't pay anybody. Um, area, area development impact fee program, uh, number three. So we'll start off with uh, co-chair Andersek. Number one. Member Mayor? One. Member Von Hoon? One. Member Vargas Smith? One. Member Member Coyne? One. Member Ty? One. Member Varshney? Uh, one with the caveat that it should also include BIT uh, operational aspects funding into it somehow, whatever the word is. <laughs> but how? VIT? BID, Business Improvement District, oh, kind of like how, like, Number eight is going to establish the entity, but who's going to fund and run the entity? How are we going to fund and run the entity? That should be part of three. All right. Thank you. I'd say one as well. I think it's important. Uh, uh, if, if I can jump in, sorry uh, to apologize, Mr. Chair, if I can jump in for a sec. Uh, so just area development impact fee programs are, are typically not inclusive of a BID yep. uh, in that type of document. Um, they're very separate because what you're doing through the area development impact fee program is creating a nexus study between improvements that are needed by, and, and are going to be funded by the development and then coming up with um, how much each developer or each you know, square foot or each unit is going to pay for it. Um, I'm not, I don't know if I've ever seen this type of document with a BID inclusive of it. I don't know what complexities that would add and certainly would not be done within that amount of money, because I assumed you actually almost would be doing two different documents and then try to marry them somehow, because the impact fee program has very specific um, requirements that were required to meet, uh, including Nexus and BID. Uh, my experience is it's, it's, it's typically, it's, it's just different. So um, before you, I mean, certainly if you include it, right, and that's the recommendation and funds it, we'll have to figure out a way to get it done, uh, but it's not typical and it does create additional complexities and certainly that amount will increase if that's what we're looking for. And, okay. And Manuel, I'd agree with you with that. Usually the BID is a, you know, seven cents per square foot that goes to the retailer that pays into it, not to the developer. Yeah. And usually it's, it's it. The other part of it, if you look at most cities, the seed funding comes from city, from, from the city itself as they build the BID with the retailers. So I would agree with Manuel on that also. So one other question, I know there have been some discussion about, and I did not read it, but like 
things like one person art fee manual is that included into things like this or that's on top of will this item number three include things like that that, that would be uh, separate yeah it's a developer's not, tax generally i thought those those are not i thought those are all impact fees part of the developer like one person art fee so i thought it's the same package sure i'll be right back uh, got it I don't know if 75,000 gets at number three and another 25 gets us a little bit of this cultural layer to the impact fee because I feel that's something we really need for downtown or if that's covered in number eight. But to understand how we fund the ongoing cultural operations of the downtown is key for me. And, I do and, kind of feel that that falls within the purview of the Cultural Commission as well because you know we're responsible for um, both activating spaces hosting outdoor spaces and um, celebrating the diversity of our community. So I feel that the Cultural Commission would be very, very active in that space. And we are funded by um, city funds. But your funding is limited, correct? It's not enough. I mean, BID would be like two to three full-time jobs if this district really takes off. And, and BID is not strictly art-based. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll go to number four. I see Dan, Dan, uh, on our second back. So four is uh, Lafayette street design. So I'll call, uh, co-chair Andersek. Two. Member mayor. Struggling. <laughs> I don't know what, uh, one and a half. That's not uh, a category. Uh, no, you can do one and a half. Uh, yeah. Jeez. Um, okay. Get off the I'm bench. just going to, I'll be, I'll just say one. Okay. Uh, member Von Hoon. Two. All right. Member Barty Smith. One. Member Coyne. I'm sitting here in the same position, a one and a half, because I think Monroe <laughs> Street is just as important. Yeah, you, you, you and Rob are both kicked off. So. I know. <laughs> We cancel each other out. I, gave, so I, up I even gave everyone three options, and that's oh, still one enough. Uh, I think I'll give it a two. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Member Ty? Two. Member Varshney? I would give it a three with having a full separate scope and doing the full big study. So I, let's I, have maybe request the policy direction from the council to give star, yeah. staff a direction to apply for full grants. I don't see patchwork on Lafayette that's fruitful to anyone. I, uh, I agree with you. I actually think we should, uh, we should defer this. I know there's, there's talks of a stationary plan and maybe that's where this, this ends up getting done. So that's a complete process through the whole thing. So I would say three. It's just because it doesn't seem like we're going to, it doesn't seem like we're actually going to achieve the full scope of what I think we're all thinking we want. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so all right. I would agree with you on that. Adam, it, I think you make a valid point, especially with the station. So I mean, I with the drop station, it down to a three. Yeah. I think, I think it would be good to just tie it in. So anyway, so what um, we can, Leslie, no tie, right? Sure. So it's uh, three to three to three for between not needed now and uh, second priority. Second priority. Is there anybody on on who's voted either way that would want to consider changing? Yes, I will change to three. Okay. There you go. Um, item number five: wayfinding sign program and branding. Uh, and then Member, or sorry, co-chair Andersek? Three. Um, member Mayor? Three. Member Von Hoon? Three. Member Vargas Smith? Two. Member Coyne? Three. Member Ty? Three. Member Varshney? Three. I also say three. I think it can be taken care of after we start putting stuff together. Um, we'll go to number six, which is post COVID retail and office analysis and recommendations. Uh, co chair Andersek. 
Okay, I'm going to say two, but it it should be a one with and tied in with eight, but I'll say two. Okay, member mayor. It's all about timing for me. So um, I guess I'll say a two, because uh, I don't think immediately, because we're still going to see what happens uh, with post COVID. So two. Member Von, Von Hoon. One. Member Vargas Smith. Two. Member Coin. Two. Member Ty. Two. Member Varshney. Two. And I also say it's a two. Um, number seven. I, I just want to make a comment. I don't mind the money spent on retail, but I do not see the need for a post COVID retail. You know, any retail we're going to design, our consultant should be sharing the lessons they have learned through COVID. So I don't see that's an ad service kind of just like intellectually, we all know. But additionally, I don't mind more money spent on a more in-depth retail strategy. Okay, so. and, uh, I think I already said two, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect, sorry. You got you got me all lost, you got me mixed up. <laughs> Number I'm seven. Trying to move through in an order. <laughs> um, all right, thank you. And then, so we'll go to number seven, which is early activation, 73,300. So co-chair Undersec. Two. Member Mayor. Two. Member Von Hoon. Three. Member Vargas Smith. Two. Member Quaid. Uh, I'm concerned about the sustainability and financing of this. So I think I'll go with the three. Uh, member Ty. Three. And Member Varshney. Three. Okay, I'd say two. Uh, <laughs> that would be a four to four tie. Jeez. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> oh. hey, no, no, it's thank you, Matthew Reed, okay? No, no, no. I showed up today, all right? Your, yours was the last vote, though. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm supposed to vote with whatever I feel, not by the way of the party. Hey, right? Matthew was excused. Well, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anybody who would want to change a vote? I'll Move. change mine. What did I'll, you? I'll uh, go to a three. Okay. I, okay. I think it's gonna evolve. Uh, okay. I don't know if it's so urgent at this moment. Fair enough. All right. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Uh, we'll go to number eight, downtown management entity, 21,000. So co-chair Undersec? One. Uh, member Mayor? Two. Member Von Hoon? One. Member Vargas Smith? One. Member Coyne? Again, I think with this one, I think it's a good idea, but I'm very nervous about it being financially sustainable. So I'm going to put it two. Member Ty? One. Member Roshni? I would go with one and I do echo Butch's concerns. I would like to see the financial sustainability as part, how we would make this entity financially sustainable part of number eight, not an additional study or you know feasibility study we do, but it should cover how recommendations or how we make it financially sustainable for at least next 15 years. And I'd say two. I think it's really I think it's really important. I just don't know if now's the time to get it set up. So yep. that's me too. I agree. Um, for the last two items, Leslie, they're really, um, from reading through them, I mean, really, it's just additional meetings on a cost basis. So I don't know. And then the project design review of any proposed projects within the plan. So I don't know if that's something that, you know, kind of gets incorporated, at least for the number nine would get incorporated into the in, uh, area development impact fee or uh, oh, the impact fee the scope is just for infrastructure right now mm -hmm. um if you wanted to put additional items like a design review committee or a percent for art fee or any other thing like that that would obviously cost additional money that's just for infrastructure it's just for infrastructure yes oh my god but I, I can say that EPS provides those services. So I would, I know they have given a range. So would the higher range cover some of these things, Leslie? They have a big range there. Um, we didn't really ask them about other, other studies for those kind of items. 
Um, the big concern was getting the infrastructure funded and built. So that's that, that was the only thing in the, our request. And how much effort it is if we come back after the adoption of plan to add these fees? Like, is it like just trying to understand what's the level of well, effort? Like if you did a percent for art fee, right? There, there would yeah. need to be, um, there would need to be a study and it would be written as an ordinance. Um, I don't, I don't have any experience with the, you know, those in particular, so I don't know what a general cost would be. Well, I know that there's also a percent for art um, study that's been done that was put on hold because of COVID, mm -hmm. but that's citywide, you know, mm -hmm. it's not just specific to this area. Mm -hmm. And I don't see why it would apply differently to downtown than the rest of the city. Agree. The only thing is that sometimes when you're doing something citywide like our ordinance update, it can take a very long time. And so we have the opportunity now to create within this district. So I, you know, it's, it, it may be a little easier to grab on this level yeah. than on a, a city level. And but, other thing is if it's specific to the district, then the money get invested specifically in this district. But if yeah. it's citywide, then we might not have control how and where the money gets yeah. invested. So that's other thing. I mean, we might be happy to get money from other districts here because it's the downtown, <laughs> so it might work in favor. So. Yeah, could, could flow the other way. <laughs> I mean, what might be good to, to deal with these two items is to ask for a potential like allowance, right? To say we earmark out, you know, additional meetings if need be like you know, two or three and project review. I mean, I can only think of really two that will probably go ahead of the plan actually potentially getting done. And so you could add for an extra 10% across the board for. Well, yeah. So, I mean, I guess, I, I guess Leslie, so, so we do have a little contingency money if we want to add some more task force meetings um, into the process. As you can see, they are expensive for the consultant to come to one meeting. So, um, that is, I believe, if I read it correctly, the cost to attend one meeting. Yeah, that's to bring in the whole entourage. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. All the experts. I want one person. <laughs> the one, one person, cut to that in half. To ask, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think it might. I, I think it might be better just to ask for a slush fund. So if you ask for the two projects, that's going to be. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to think. Seventy eight hundred, and then if you ask for three meetings, another twelve grand, thirteen grand. So, I mean, twenty. Twenty two thousand dollars. I mean, as a slush, you know, as an allowance for additional meetings and project design reviews potentially. I don't. I. I'm, I mean. Anyone can open up to this. I, I'm not oh, I, how to it because it's well, not quantifiable, right? I think I it's would, a good insurance policy. I I totally agree. I think we should give staff some flexibility than negotiating every meeting. With, yeah, I don't want to. Uh, yeah. No, I, I I think what Leslie, what are the what is the total of the items that we said are are priority number one? Um. Uh, so you have item number one which is the form-based zoning code. I can do the tally as you're saying. Okay. Basically. Item number three, the impact fee program. Mm -hmm. So we're at 192,500. And then the third one is item number eight, the downtown management entity. So and that is 18. 21,000. Oh, yep. Yeah. So 213. 500. Let's just ask for $25,000 and an allowance for additional meetings and project design review. Would that be fair to ask? I think from so. the for, you know, task force to just lump that in as a priority number one so we have some flexibility so we don't come back? Absolutely. Agreed. Okay. So can we get, I'll, I'll ask for everybody to vote a one, two, or three on that. Basically, that would cover items nine and 10 as an allowance to, to use as 
as we need. Um, so, Co-Chair Andersek? One. Uh, Member Mayor? One. Member Von Hoon? One. Member Barry Smith? One. Member Coyne? One. Member Ty? One. Member Varshney? One. And I say three. All right, sounds good. I just wanted to throw that in there to say that there's, you know, no uh, solidarity here. <laughs> We're all rogue. Um, all right, well, thank you. That was good. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, Leslie, if you could just send Dan and I, and then we'll probably set up a meeting next week to talk to you about, um, you know, just what we can do because i'll build a couple slides i think it would be really important and if anybody yeah. has any comments maybe just send them to leslie on what you think might be included but i've been taking down notes and listening so um so I, how many minutes do we have leslie is it five or ten um i don't i i think you get whatever the mayor gives you you don't have a time limit because you're an agenda item perfect well I'm, we'll probably get a minute then um, yeah, yeah. They will, see, they've had long, see, and, yes. I, I, and I say that because they have had long and and long meetings lately, and I know that all they're all beat, so um, they don't yes. want to listen to us talk about something. That, that so, yeah, be chair. concise. Yes, be concise. Yeah, yeah. So, all chair, right. I, I have a question. Slides are great. Uh, yes, yes, member Coin. Uh, at the top of the meeting, uh, Tisha had mentioned uh, about asking staff for their opinion. And I, I don't know if it's oh, appropriate or oh, not, thank you for reminding but me. I would love that it, I, you know, I want to make sure we're not stepping into some quicksand on one of these items <laughs> or something. So if anybody, I would recommend if anybody on staff could give us guidance, because you guys are the experts to make sure that we're doing this right. I think we would appreciate the comments if that's appropriate. Um, I would just say to start with that, you know, all of these 10 items really came from task force discussion and what all of you see are needed to be a successful downtown. So these are your important priority items. As staff, um, I look for the council to give me direction on, you know, what I should include in my project description. So if you as the community feel these things are important and the council finds them important as well and directs us to work on them, um, that, that is what I do. I know Manuel talked a little bit about the Lafayette street design and how that's sort of a more involved process. Um, so I thought that was really good, good feedback on that one. That's probably the most complicated one, um, of them all, but that's, that's my two cents. Um, and that, that, that's a great political answer. Appreciate that. <laughs> is to be very blunt. Is there anything that when you look at this list or our conversations that we are missing? You are the experts. Yes, we're the community task force. Yes, we have our directions and what we want to do. But again, this project is so important. We have to rely on the experts, which is staff mm -hmm. who do this every day. So if there isn't, that's fine. Or if it's not appropriate to say something, mm -hmm. that's fine. But we, I, I feel we should give you the opportunity to help us make this a successful project. And wanted to give you, if the, the rest of the committee is is an agreement, an opportunity to make sure we're going in the right direction. I mean, the precise plan really is the most important thing that that we're doing. It sets the stage for for everything. Um, that that's a priority in my mind. All the things on on your list are all really great things, and they'll help implement that precise plan. Um, and and they come they you know sort of come after you get that po initial policy direction. So. The precise plan really is the most important thing the city is doing right now to, to spur downtown. Um, that's, that's my focus. Thank you. And thank you for all the hard work the entire staff's been doing on this project too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you. And I hate to say this, I just got a note that the city webpage read this meeting is Thursday, March 31st. So they might be thinking tomorrow. So just a heads up on that. I think it was posted as Thursday. Somebody asked me to pass that on. Thanks, Dan. Mm -hmm. You bet. Uh, and can I just make a request? This was an anomaly week, but until May 15th, I am unable to do Tuesday and Wednesday evenings. Just does happens to be my spring break. 
for a class, few classes I'm taking at SGSU. So if we are doing additional meetings, it will be great not to keep them on Wednesday <laughs> or Tuesday or Wednesday. So that's it. <laughs> You can note that. Thank you, Adam. Yep, thank you. Hope, hopefully, we're we're better on track. So hopefully, we don't have to do a bunch of uh, of, of additional meetings versus the uh, already planned ones. So, all right. So now that we are done, can we close item one? You can. So is there a motion to close item number one today? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor of closing item number one, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Yeah. All right, ayes have it. And then we'll go to public presentation. So is there anyone in the public that would like to address the task force tonight on items that are not on this agenda? Please raise your hand. I'll raise my own hand. Funny. Let's see. Don't see any hands. Don't see any hands. All right. So we close public comment. Is there a motion to close public comment? Motion to close. Or pu public presentations. I apologize. Public I'm... presentation and comments. So moved. Is there a second. Second. All in favor of closing public presentation and comments, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. All right, public comment is closed. So is there a motion to adjourn the meeting of, wait a minute, February 18th. Leslie, you almost had it. You were so close. <laughs> you were so close. Even but you know what? Toes. You'll have another chance. So <laughs> March 31st, 2021. Is there a motion to close adjourn the, uh, this evening's meeting? So um, moved. Is there a second? <laughs> Second. I'm going to all say Dan favor, and Okay. All in favor <laughs> of, of adjourning the special meeting of March 31st, 2021, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. All right. The ayes have it. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, the good public, night. for coming hey, and hanging in there. Everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Leslie, I have a question for the last vote. Oh, sorry, uh, we can stop recording. Uh, yeah, hold on. Did I stop? Do you want to stop? Yeah.